Vladimir Putin has been in power in Russia for 24 years already. Today, the former KGB officers from St. Petersburg began another six-year term as president. He was sworn in at... Truth, this sea has become treason in an empire of lies. The ignorance, arrogance and self-conceitedness some of these Western media news anchors display in their little studio rooms these days is very mind-boggling. What is this news anchor actually saying? That President Putin is a former KGB officer. Implication, he is not qualified to be a president or what? Obviously, this news anchor is allergic to research and history, lest she would have known that George Bush Sr. was a CIA officer who also became President of the United States, the equivalent of CIA in Russia is the KGB. So what makes this woman assume that President Putin was just a former KGB officer who shouldn't be qualified to be a president of this civilized country known as Russia. According to her, sworn in at a lavish ceremony at the Kremlin where he pledged to defend the constitution and the rights of Russian citizens. The highly choreographed spectacle was beamed live on Russian television with the intention to project a strong and confident leader. But Putin is in fact a leader who has become increasingly isolated in the Western world. The US and most EU what does this news anchor mean and understand by highly choreographed spectacle? Which countries love such highly choreographed spectacles more than Western countries? Granted, it was even so, and so what? What was wrong? if that was the case. Or, as usual, people like these news anchor were praying for a failure or an accident to happen at this event. It is only the Western countries that deserve positive media, right? This anchor went on further to say the u.s and most eu countries boycotted the inauguration and in protest over putin's war in ukraine and his dismantling of russian democracy he won a landslide election victory in march in a contest considered neither free nor fair and without facing any meaningful opposition at the inauguration he it would have been pathetic if that was the case First of all, there were almost 3,000 people in the Grand Kremlin Palace to witness the inauguration. The absence of an American ambassador and some three European Union countries' envoys was nothing to write home about. They were not missed and they would have played no significant role either. President Putin won with about 88% from Russians who are very pleased to have him as their leader. Which Western country leader today has more than 37% support of their population in their countries? So who are these people like this news anchor to challenge the 88% of Russians who went to the polls to vote to elect their leader? Who tells such actors 
the the CIA asset Navalny, who was trained to overthrow the Putin government in a color revolution, but failed, was the choice of the people. For her information, Navalny had just 1% popularity among the people. Can she compare 1% to 88%? Or she's trying to tell us 88% of the Russians don't know what is good for them and their country. So before she goes on whining about a Putin not having a fair and fair elections, what about a democratic presidential election in Ukraine, which hasn't taken place yet? Let's take a listen again. Putin often comes across as being isolated, or that is how he's being portrayed in, in Western media. There's this iconic picture of him alone at the end of this very, very long table. Is that a genuine representation of his leadership? Now, this can no longer be considered as ignorance, but pure imprudence. Just watch how she almost bit her tongue when trying to claim that President Putin is isolated. This news anchor really needs proper education. Somebody please try to educate her on geopolitics and enlighten her that the only countries isolated today are the United States and its Western European vessels. Apart from that, the world is bigger than the G7 countries. The Western world is less than 33% of the world's population. The rest of the world is not isolating Russia and the world doesn't evolve only around a little Western world. Let's listen to her again. It's Korea. And now, Putin is 71 years old today. He's not going to be able to stay in power forever, even though he probably would like to. Is he thinking of a successor, you think? Um, yes, I think he has to. He has to be aware of his own mortality by now. Indeed, if he is does make it through to the end of this six-year term, he's going to be uh, 77, uh, and it's unlikely he'll be strong enough to run for another term, though who knows what... Isn't it interesting how these benighted ones have forgotten that Joe Biden is 81 years old. She really thinks that at age 77, President Putin will be too old to continue to rule. But President Biden at age 81 is very great, isn't it? For her obliviousness, Biden is 81 years old and still seeking to run for another term, which will take him to 85 years. Let's say young, being very sarcastic about it. Based on her premise and based on her logic, then President Putin has another 15 graceful years in him to rule his country. The fact is this, Western leaders come and go and Putin was, is, and will still be there. And yes, President Putin, one of the most respected leaders of today, will stay forever in the history books of the world. The Russian people say he is their best president. And there is nothing 
some whining little news anchor in the Western media can do about it. So what do you think? Are corporate journalists reading and analyzing Hollywood movies as academic, geopolitical, and strategic work instead of researching and reporting genuine educative news? Well, kindly leave your comments in the comment section below and thanks for tuning in. I will be back with the next broadcast. Good day.